At 222 Chicago Sports Radio, 670 The Score, Boars and Bernstein. And we promised you we would have a conversation with Billy Cub, and we're going to do that. We go to the Home Run-In Pizza Hotline, try one off the grill. It's fast and it's easy, and we are joined now by John Paul Wire, who is the man who dresses up in the Billy Cub outfit for Cubs game days. Hi, John. Hi, guys. How you doing? Good. So is this something you are still doing? Uh, correct, yes. I, I no longer wear any official logos, uh, but it's something I still continue to do every game. And oh. this is despite the fact that MLB has already sent you officially a 100-page cease and desist letter. My question is, why continue? Well, I continue because uh, my goal is to become the official mascot of the Chicago Cubs. I think this could be a really great story that you know a fan for seven years has devoted his time and effort into wearing a costume, a costume and attempt to uh, convince the organization to have an official mascot. And then if you know they would finally decide to hire me and make me the official mascot, I, th- I think that'd be a, a great story. And it would be an awesome accomplishment for me as a Cubs fan. I want to be on the field in that costume four or five years from now when they're finally winning World Series. All right. If at this point, not only has you, have you not advanced your goal of becoming that, but now there's an actively adverse relationship with both the team and MLB. Do you, what light do you see at the end of the tunnel that in any way tells you you still have any chance whatsoever of being hired as the official mascot? I, mean, I very well realize that this is a one-in-a-million shot. Uh, that's kind of why I've gone to the media and started telling my story, because I'm, I'm very disappointed in the way the organization has treated me. Uh, they have not given me the opportunity to uh, come to them with my ideas and present my, my ideas to them. Instead, they've only tried to uh, get me to sign a, confidentiality, a, gra- a confidentiality agreement and basically go away and never talk about this again. So I, I know that this is a very long shot for me to do it, but I'm hoping that the fans who have interacted with me over the years, there's millions of fans out there that have made laugh, smile on their way to the ballpark in some way, shape, or form. I'm just kind of hoping if I can get them behind them in a last attempt to kind of convince the Cubs that this is something good that I've done over the past seven years and that this is something that the, a lot of fans out there would like to see. But you're doing it for money. Oh, I'm not doing it for money. I'm doing it. I did not start doing this for money. I actually started doing this to promote for a book that I wrote. And I stood out there for the first uh, half of the season and handed out bookmarks for a, a book that I wrote called uh, Fourth and Inches. It's a high school football drama. So I was making no money off this to start, and I basically put myself in a situation where I was in credit card debt and didn't have any income coming in, and that's when I started collecting tips. I interact with all fans for free. So people come to the ballpark, I give them high fives, you know, I do anything I can to make them laugh, make them smile. The only way I collect money is if someone asks for a picture, and then I show them a tip jar that says that I'm expecting a tip for a picture. Well, let me ask you this. What... what you know, two different Cub regimes we're dealing with here. What was your? Did you have a dealing with the old Cub regime in any way, shape, or form in terms of doing this? Somebody from the I old. Did. I, I, okay. I spoke with the Tribune Company at the end of the 2007 season. That was the first year I did it. Okay. And they uh, informed me that they were not in the market for a mascot, but they felt that what I did just added to the whole game day experience and the whole vibe of, of Wrigley Field. And so they just encouraged me to continue doing it. And so I have continued doing it. And then two years ago when the Ricketts took over, that's the first time I've ever had any real issues with them no longer wanting me out there on the streets doing it. What is your regular job? Well, I work at events. So have you ever heard of Tough Mudder? No. It's a, it's, it's no. a running race. Tough Mudder is a, it's a 5K, 10K running race with obstacles. There's all types of mud runs out there. I travel around the country, and I set up all, all different types of uh, mud runs for different companies. So, but you still have for... 81 days a year, you've got a full 10-hour day to wear the bear suit, correct? Correct. I try to make every game. Um, I have to do some events and can't do it, and therefore my brother, uh, roommate, other friends of mine fill in and uh, help me do it. So Billy Cub's always out there. Someone's doing it. Someone's wearing the costume every, every game. For the last seven years, he's been out there every day, whether I've been in town or out of town traveling. He's out there every day taking pictures of the fans. And about how much do you make in tips per year? Uh, the most I've ever profited is around five grand, which is, you know, a decent hobby for doing something you like to do and something that 
like I said, I see the long-term potential, and if I could ever get hired, it would be a, a huge okay. accomplishment the, for me. The, first of all, they're just not going to hire you. I think that's obvious. I think once the, the, the league and the team hands you a cease and desist notice asking you to stop, it's a pretty good indication that they're that they're not going to hire you. Yeah, it would seem well, you know, to me yeah, at this point. What's funny about that, though, is uh, after they sent me the cease and desist order, that was when they sent me a confidentiality agreement saying that if I signed it, they would interview me and consider me for the official which, mascot, which, but only right, if I that, signed that, the confidentiality. Right. That's a way of buying you off, of telling you to go away, and then they would let you sit in an office, and then they would never see you again. They weren't actually interviewing you for the job. Well, that's what it clearly stated in the contract that they sent me, that they would consider of course, me for Of course, the it, it, it has to be stated, but there's no way they're actually doing that. You, I'm sure your lawyer would explain that to you upon reading it. Now, my, my larger question is, how do you describe your annual income in tips on your tax return? Well, I own my own event company, uh, so I just put it down as part of my event work that comes in. So, so, the, money that, so the money that I earn is basically just a part of the, the event company. It, the money goes into the event company, and then I can pay myself out you know, a salary that I want out of any profit. So Billy Cub is actually part or a, a licensed brand owned by an event company? Yeah, I'm my own event company, JP Events. So the, the just everything that's listed under that is all the event work that I do as far as the mud runs. I'm an independent contractor for all those. So okay. I have okay. my own company that I get independently contracted out through. All right. So and I just so, add that income. Now, with that in mind, there the Cubs and Julian Green, their spokesperson, has said the following. We have received complaints from fans mistakenly believing Billy Cub to be associated with the Cubs. He cited complaints, this uh, according to, the again, the spokesperson, Julian Green. A Billy Cub character swore at a patron and used an ethnic slur because of an inadequate tip. On another occasion, a Cubs employee claimed to have witnessed a prolonged verbal altercation between Billy and another fan, again, over the size of a tip. Is this true? Uh, those those uh, complaints were brought to my attention. Uh, there was a gentleman who was working for me that did do that. Uh, he no longer works for me as soon as I found out about that. And those are also uh, two written complaints in the course of seven years in which I've interacted, again, with, with millions of fans as they come in and out of the ballpark. So the math on that is kind of on my side. Well, not necessarily. Again, if, if there could be action taken against your events company in any of these situations. Uh, written, I mean, I, I don't believe complaining for a tip would be anything that would be any type of legal action. Now, there's nothing, nothing wrong with getting in an argument with someone over how much they tip you. Would, is that what really? I wanted to happen? No. I, I mean, I'm very offended that that happened and that had my character. But, I, you know, it's, it's two complaints over the course of seven years. And, and what's the big picture here? You know, maybe those people should just put a dollar in the tip jar so the gentleman wearing the costume, working hard, sweating to take pictures with fans, you know, can just go about his day. I got. I got to admit something. You're not really doing much to help your own case with that. Uh, with that particular thought. That well, does not is, those, those, are, those are two complaints over the course of seven years, yeah, and it I, is. It's a complaint over complaining that someone didn't tip enough. It's not like anyone was hurt. It's not like anyone got into a fight. Well, the, the you know, it, it, no, nothing illegal happened. It, it was just a complaint that uh, someone in the costume argued over the amount was tipped. Like I, the, I don't but, see how this is a huge deal and something that should negate all the good I've done over the seven years. What good have you done? I've made hundreds and hundreds of fans smile and laugh coming in and out of the ballpark. I hear people tell me every day that, you know, hey, Billy, keep up the good work. You know, hey, we love you, Billy. You know, you're awesome, Billy. Like, I make people laugh and smile. I, I give them a memorable photo that they can hold on to for the rest of their life. I have families that come every single year and take a new picture with Billy, and there's kids that have grown up, you know, from the day I've started doing this who are now seven, eight years old, and they have a picture with Billy Cub every day. I, I think that's something really cool, something really special that I've provided to fans over the last seven years. All right, but the, the larger picture here, if, you're, if your goal of taking this to the media is somehow to become a sympathetic figure, how does, do you believe that this is actually in any way going to affect the Cubs, who appear to have made up their mind that you are not part of their plan? If they wanted to, put, if they put an agreement in front of you to say, look, if if well, if you get to come into an office and sit down and plead your case, and then legally we can tell you to shut up and, and make you go away, it's obvious that that would be their primary goal. How does not doing that, how does actively defying both a cease and desist letter and an attempt to 
legally make you stop talking? How does defying that, going out of your way to thumb your nose at them and to talk more, how does that make you more likely to be hired? Like I said, I know it's a one in a million shot. But no, again, for, but obviously, I mean, it's 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 worse than a one. It's a zero shot. But why why approach it this way? Why be active and defiant about it when that there's no possible way that can help you? Because when uh, the Cubs do come out with their own mascot, I want all the fans to be well aware that I was out here first, and this is an idea that I've had for a long time that that they never allowed me to go through with. Okay, again, I'm but, but, but that but, so to, to are, support me. Uh, but how how do they support you? What I'm saying is there is, that unless you're threatening legal action, unless you believe the Cubs will be in some copyright violation in that regard, the Cubs are absolutely allowed to do that. They're in a situation where they can they own their brand, they own anything attached to their brand, and if they want to have their own mascot with somebody else in the costume, they're perfectly allowed to do that. Yeah, they're they're allowed to do that, but what I'm saying is I just hope that the fans hear the story, realize that it's something I'm passionate about that I've started the tradition doing but, and, and what what do, but what does that accomplish? What's the end goal in that? What does that accomplish? Even if all the fans say, Oh yeah, okay, it was it was that guy before. They why do they care? Why wouldn't they care? They've interacted with me before. It's a like guy a, in a, a suit. It's a guy in a suit that makes people smile and laugh. Like, get some callers in here. There's a lot of people that really, really right, but, like but, me. But really there will be another guy in a suit. Uh, exactly, but he hasn't been out there for seven years giving people memories. He doesn't Over have to be. It's a, the, no one knows who that guy in no one knows who the guy in the suit is. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you're in character. Remember when they when they came out, you were the the guy in the suit was completely in character, right? And you do, you, you do not leave character when you're in that suit. Exactly, but everyone knows that it's it's Billy Cub. So if the Cubs, well, you know, decide not to hire me, they come out with their own mascot. And, 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 doing this and what is happens? For fans to still, yeah. Is for fans to still know that I'm still going to be out here. And that no, you're not. No, you're not going to be out there. They, you're they going to be gone. From being out there in a bear costume without any official logos on it, they, they have no case. That's why they won't file a case against me. There's a reason why they haven't taken me to court yet. It's because they know they have no case against me. So it's your goal, no matter what, to continue to spend ten hours walking around in a bear suit outside Wrigley Field for tip money. And now a logo, this one, right? Yes, no, it does no. not have any official trademark logos. Okay. Now, here's the other right. thing: that once the Cubs, now, once the renovation gets done, and they own more of the land where people are going to be interacting, and they have control over the traffic patterns, you understand that most people will not be funneling by the land that isn't theirs, right? Correct. Okay. So you'll be literally on the outside looking in. I've been on the outside looking in for the past seven years. I mean, you've come to Cubs games, you see how packed and crazy the streets get. They they are probably going to push back all the T-shirt vendors, all the peanut vendors, everyone out here who tries to make a living out here. And they'll probably make us all stand further away from Wrigley Field. But, you know, they're not going to get rid of us as long as the city allows us. So to no matter what, unless they come and arrest you, you're going to be there. That's what you're telling us, John. That is 100% correct. Okay. All right. but, but however, however, that, that uh, I'm a little just confused as to the goal here. Either you're saying, I don't care what you do, Cubs, I'm still going to be here. Or you're saying you believe that you have some sort of entitlement to be the actual official mascot when that time comes. Which is it? I feel like I at least earn the right to be interviewed for the position. You know, if they would have just interviewed me for, for the position, heard my ideas and thoughts on it, and then decided to go a different way, I would have no issue with that. But the fact is that they tried to trick me into signing a confidentiality agreement that would just basically give up all my ideas and rights, and then they wouldn't have to hire me, and I wouldn't be able to continue doing it on the street either as well. So, I, I mean, if they come out with their own mascot, that's fine, but I would like to be able to continue doing what I do on the street. And, and you, you are I mean, certain? I, I, but, see, I but, see this as a very fun, cool hobby. You know, I, I dress up in a bear costume, I make people laugh and smile, and I make a little bit of extra money on it. I'm not hurting anybody, so what, you know, what's the big deal? All right, but you, so what you're saying is you're going to do it anyway, even if the Cubs do have their own guy, that you're still going to be, all of these, these revolutionary ideas or all these things that you have, this proprietary information that, the, that you think the Cubs were, were, were trying to trick you into getting, you'll be using all that on your own then. No, I, the ideas I have are to implement for the official mascot. You know, it's obviously much different what I do on the street, street performing, than what an official mascot would do being affiliated with the team. You know, they're two totally different things. You know, I'm, I'm a street performer out there 
you know, working for tips. I make people laugh by, you know, asking for money. It's part of the gig. It's part of what I do. It, being the official mascot and being a street performer out on the streets are, are two different businesses run two completely different ways. Are you, uh, are you sure the Cubs are going to do a mascot thing? Is that something you know for they, sure? That, that is something that they brought up to my lawyer that next year they're coming out with a mascot to celebrate 100 years of Wrigley Field. That is something that they uh, told okay. my lawyer. Have you been in, involved in any other businesses around the ballpark, whether it's selling any kind of merchandise or anything else, or has this been the only thing that you've ever done? Um, I've had a website up in 2008 that sold all the novelty T-shirts that other vendors out here come up with and sell. And uh, Major League Baseball stepped in and asked me to take down the website, and mm-hmm. so I did. I've, I've complied with everything that Major League Baseball has asked me to do over the course of seven years. Except until this. They asked me, until they asked me to no longer do it entirely. Well, well, I think they kind of have, haven't they? Well, if I remember, they, they if they I remember correctly, the, the there was copyright infringement going on with some of those T-shirts that they were they were not being sold legally. Correct? Well, first off, the website was only up for a couple months. I didn't, uh, no, I'm not, I, no I didn't ask how long. Involved. I didn't ask how long it was up. But if I remember that story correctly, there 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 was illegality as part of that arrangement. Like I said, there are other vendors' T-shirts which come very close to being Cubs logos. You know, a lot of them are very much so in the gray area, and so they may have a case. They may may not. You know, that's something that a trademark lawyer would have to, you know, d- decide on. I would. I would have guessed though that the Cubs would be very wary of actually continuing to do business with someone who was involved in that venture that was shut down because it was outside of trademark law. Yeah, it wasn't shut down. They asked me to shut it down, and I did. You know, no, again, no legal action was taken. Didn't have they to. They asked me to shut it down, and I complied with them, and I did. All right, the last thing, why won't you shut this down when they asked? They have asked you. The 100-page letter, they have asked you. The old regime didn't like it. This regime clearly doesn't like it. Why not give it up? Because, like I said, this is a hobby of mine that I really enjoy. Well, I make a little bit of extra money on it, and I make my own Cubs fans and other baseball fans smile and laugh. It gives me a chance to, to live in Wrigleyville and be a part of of Cubs game days. It's, as a Cubs fan, it's really enjoyable to do. That's, that's why I don't want to give it up. Why should I have to give up a hobby that I feel is something very positive for the neighborhood and that isn't hurting anyone and that makes me a little extra money on the side? Well, my suggestion would be to stick to that and then don't say that you have some sort of public relations campaign to try to, that's to, to, try to gain support yeah, that, to eventually work for the Cubs. Yeah, I Cubs, think, I think you're, you're, you have different goals here. One is, leave me alone, I want to walk around in a bear suit. The other is, the Cubs should hire me. I think the Cubs should consider hiring me. They're like not said, going to. They're but you not, know they're not they're, going to, right? Especially, especially if you're you're on the muscle about somehow being wronged, and you've already been involved in a business that was forced to shut down because it was running afoul of official MLB business. That's not a path to team employment. Uh, all those T-shirts that you were saying were illegal, other T-shirt vendors still sell yeah. out here and were never forced to shut down. They never stopped shutting them down. M- MLB tries to come after everyone out here who sells T-shirts every year. Trademark law is, is very tricky. If it's 30% different, the logo, then you don't have a case. So all these T-shirt vendors out here try to, you know, come up with logos and things that are very close to the official logo without being the official logo. All right, we'll let you go, Jeb. But again, the, yeah, don't, don't, you know, you've got to uh, stop the idea the Cubs are going to hire. They're never, the Ricketts family is not going to come down there and say, come on and be our mascot. You know that, right? You really, ser- seriously, you understand that, right? That I, I do I do understand that, but okay. that's, again, my point is trying to get the fans no, no. to understand that I've done everything to do this. And they, don't they, they don't care. Out they, they don't care. There's going to be a guy in a bear suit inside the park. So, so you speak for all Cubs fans now? No, I'm, I, the Cubs believe that as well, and I think no one no one knows who's in the bear suit, nor do they care. I think they do care because, like I said, I know for a fact I've made millions of fans laugh and smile. Right, and but that's when you're wearing a bear suit. So will the next person in the bear suit. Again, that's my whole point, too. When, when I'm gone and I'm no longer around, you're gone, you're no longer around, I hope the Billy Cub character is still out there street performing and carrying on doing what he's doing. I hope that I have developed something that can live on long after me, whether it okay. be official or not official. All right. All right. I don't think that's going to happen, but we appreciate your time. All right, guys. All right. Okay, that's John Paul Wire, also known as Billy Cub. Ah. 
<laughs> Zach Zaidman is going to have the latest on the Bears. Keep it here. You got the score.